Good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and start today's meeting. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the determination of a quorum. I count seven members present. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll entertain any questions or approval of the minutes. Oh. At this time, we'll entertain any approval of the minutes or any questions from the commissioners regarding last month's minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Oh, I forgot what Thank I you. I don't have anything to report at this time. Any other commissioners have any comments? Yes. Uh, I, I just want to say I was able yesterday and today for the first time to use the new mobile ticketing. Um, and I just want to, again, thank everybody that worked on that because it really is a game changer. Um, I'm not just because of the ease of not having to deal with a physical ticket, but being able to track your bus um, because I was going to catch a bus and it ended up passing me by and I was like, oh no, I got to wait like a half hour. But then I realized that there was a different bus on the same route that I could take and I had to wait like three minutes. So thank you for that. Thank you. Commissioner Helsley. Thank you. Uh, I was just wanted to thank Isaac for the restoral of the Flanagan Landing bus stop, the restoration, because those people, 48 disabled people, are eternally grateful. You're now their new best friend, Isaac, and I thank you. Uh, I just want to say staff had everything to do with that, so uh, credit goes to them. I should have said Isaac and staff. They're just not all here, so, but thank you and your staff. Thank you. At this time, we'll have update for the Director of Transit. Out of interest of time, I have no updates at this point in time. Transit Planner. Same with me. Um, I, I don't have any report this month. We'll start the new business at this time. Yeah, that's the vote on the proposed routes and timetables for Cat Reimagine. We probably want to go to public comment first before we, okay. we vote on that. So I think we have two specific public comment cards, one for the Cat Reimagine and one for following the meeting. Okay. How many people do we have signed up for public comment? Oh. 15 for Cat Reimagined and six for Cat in general. And so those comments will be limited to five minutes. And I think the first person is Nathaniel. Please state your name and your address for the records. And you have five minutes. She's going to assist you. I live at, my name is Nathaniel Stevenson, the third. I live at Sutherland Park Apartment. I work at Goodwill on Pleasant Ridge, and I need the 90 and the 24 to get where I'm going. And I also have doctor's appointments on Middlebrook and Dow Springs, so I really need them buses to stay. It's really, it'll be really hard for me to get to work. I will have to transfer, and I don't want to transfer. I like my job, and I, I, there's a lot of things I like to do on the 90. Okay. Thank you. The next person is Paul, Paul Faust. Please state your name and your address for the records. Yes, I'm Paul Faust, and I live at the uh, 100 uh, Lulu Powell Drive, apartment B411, Oxygen C3, 7915. And my concern is, we riding the public bus and things, start with, we, we had a good thing there, you know, but they took, messed it up. They changed all the signs and everything. And then when the crippled people has to go fourth of a mile, just about it, to get on the bus, and, and, you know, thing of it is, it's discrimination. I'm 67 year old, and I took, and I respect cats. I rode the bus now almost 10 years, and they good people. But sometimes you make mistakes. And thing of it is, if they just put the signs back, the only one sign needs to be changed, and that was down at uh, 
Lulu Powell Drive, when you get off, they need to put it on the other side of the driveway because they had to sign when you get off, get on the bus, you had to cross it with those steel water things, you know, lucky that somebody ain't fell in it and things. You know what I'm saying? So I, I take you know, give you a little history. I retired from the state of Tennessee, the government, myself from, from Lakeshore and things. And my last boss was Bill Haslam, of course. And anyway, what I got to say is, if they just take and listen to people, instead of taking, doing it all of their own, they can get things done better. I'm here to try to help them, not take and go against them. Because when you go to, one thing about it, when you're at her age and you go out down at Broadway, and you take a bus, and you park from the pl uh, right in front of the building, the doors, and get crippled people and stuff like that. See, we got people crippled people in our place too. They said, "Well, it'd be faster." Now, what that, what it is? Public transportation. Public's paying for it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, but what I'm trying to say is, they they got a house built. When it rains, you got to get in there, get dry, and things keep you people crippled and things like that from taking, getting wet and things. So if they just put the things back and change one sign and the other signs they put in front of the school. And when the school lets out, here you are people trying to get on the bus stuff, getting trampled by kids and stuff. You see, they, they had it right to start with and they changed something, shouldn't have been changed with one thing. That's the thing over the water thing, okay? and things, so I was in the government too, so I ain't gonna talk about that. So anyway, I just take trying to help, you know, get this said. I, I enjoy riding the bus, you know, they're good people. It's good drivers and things, and uh, I stand behind them because they work hard, okay? And the uh, thing it is, if we can get this straightened out, they got a, a house built there, you know, already. What are they gonna do? Tear it down? That's six hundred, seven hundred dollars. That's a waste of money. That's sort of like when you tore Lake Shore down, you know. And well, I know why they did that anyway. And best to take care of all that. But anyway, um, I'll shut up and things. But I appreciate you listening to me and things. And just if we can get some help getting this back to in order. See the people from. Uh, the other uh, housing place, Penel, as you come up the road there on this side, they take in uh, have to walk a uh, big distance too. But the uh, thing of it is, if it's cold, raining, and stuff, they get all soaked and wet. Thing, but they had it fixed when you came up. The ones that cripple and stuff come up, and they can get on the bus right there. They come out, you know, get up and things. But what it is senior citizen being discriminated against. That's what it is. Anyway, I'll take and let you all take and talk about it. But we do need to get changed back and get it but right, okay? I appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Faust. We appreciate your comments as well. The next person is Teresa Bradley. And following that will be Aaron Kilgore. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Teresa Bradley. And I live at 1109 Beeman Lake Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm here with concern about the uh, rerouting at Golden Age. Uh, I was told that they were going to cut the two buses that go there. Is that so? 31, I mean, 34 and 32. This is just comments right now, and then there'll be a time at the end, perhaps, to address the questions. Oh, I'm sorry? This is just time for your public comments, and then I'll address oh, anything. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that back there. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, my public comment is that I've called on many occasions with complaints, 
And at the end, I always allow them to know that your service sucks. I've been in transportation for 30 years. I've drove semis, dump trucks, city transit, and school buses. And the way things go here, if you guys were to do that in Ohio, they would boycott you. They did it in 82 because we are the reason you get your check. And so I'm just hoping that we can get drivers that are more courteous uh, with people that are disabled to help them out more instead of being rude to them. Uh, if, that, if you guys can tighten that up because no senior should be disrespected for their disabilities. And that has happened with some of your drivers. And um, another comment is your wheelchair lifts are not operable. They, half of the time they don't work, they gotta step on it to get it to run down and people have tipped over on their uh, lifts. So if they could do something about that, better maintenance on them or something, that would be truly nice. And my last point is I have the uh, schedule on my phone and I'm not tech savvy at all, but the timing is so off, it'll say 34, in 12 minutes and you're out there half an hour and I'm looking like, well, what's wrong? Did I miss something wrong? So I don't know if it's a glitch in my phone or where it is, but if they can be more precise because I am on the bus for right now. So I thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Bradley. Aaron Kilgore. Um, my name is um, Avon Kelgo. I live at 618 Mid Ranch Drive in Fence City. And I got one of a diggy cut out um, 90 um, to from Fence City to no Northgate. I feel I need to keep 90 Golden to from Fane City and to Northgate have old, older people get get around where they going to. That's that all I got. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. The next person is Virginia Westlake. And following that, it's Marshall. I can't read the last name, but Marshall. So Virginia and then Marshall. Good afternoon. My name's Virginia Westlake. I live at 201 Locust Street. I am the, uh, I lead the resident association at Summit Towers. There are 300 residents at Summit Towers. 98% of them are 65 or over and disabled. Uh, currently, we have a trolley stop that is right in front of our building, and there is a bus stop down on uh, Summit Hill that is um, both pretty close to us. Um, these people, um, they have chosen doctors and pharmacies downtown so because they're close to our residents. Um, if there is not a bus stop close to this area, these people are not going to be able to access those um, downtown areas. Um, there is, um, there's the loop that goes from Summit Towers Apartments, um, and then there's the um, Immaculate Conception Church uh, on that same loop. There needs to be a um, downtown connector stop somewhere in that area. Um, my point is a stop that close to Summit Towers is not for convenience. Uh, it's a necessity to these residents. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll have Marshall. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here. First of all, I just want to say thank you for allowing us this opportunity. And let's give this board a big hand. We're just thankful and grateful to have a, 
a bus system the size of this city and we're able to move around. Uh, I live at uh, 1026 Cedar Lane in Knoxville, the bus route of Mighty 80, Mighty 90. And uh, we're proud of our bus route. And I'm thankful because, you know, I've looked over the years and I've seen, we've seen uh, a lot of good things happen. The drivers, the operators are wonderful. There are people who are very helpful. And we've made a lot of relationships in our riding the bus because for many of us, as you grow older, these kind of things, the situations in your life change. So what's happened is that there's been a lot of relationships made. Not only relationships, but jobs have been expanded. And when you look at Knoxville, we're a growing population of people. Growing population of people. We've got a great economy, and it continues to, to rise, and it's going to rise in the future. I'm thinking people from all over the world are coming to East Tennessee and to Middle Tennessee, and there's a lot of growth and development. So that means there's taxes that are being channeled into this area. That's going to help people in the future. But what I've noticed with all the progress that we've made, we've had some of the signs taken down or bus stops where the bus stops no longer. Uh, you'll have to walk across heavy traffic in order to get back to a position where you have to go to a drugstore. And I'm wondering, if this doesn't really fit with the progress that Knox has made. And I guess I'm dating myself on this. I remember when the trolley cars used to run downtown, the electricity shooting through there. And uh, that was before your time. <laughs> but, but, but it's been a joy to see the progress that we have made. And I'm thinking that we continue to make progress as change comes along. I don't think any of us are adverse to change. That's the first thing. None of us are adverse to change. But what we are concerned about here is to take a good hard look in terms of what the sister said before me in terms of people who are elderly, people who have disabilities. These are concerns and thinking along those lines, some routes will not be able to move, get people to where they need to go. We've heard speculation and innuendo about what's going to happen. So that's why I'm here. I'm hoping I get some, some answers to things. But also I'm hoping that this situation that we're involved in can get a review. And if we get a review from some of the comments that many of us are making, I'm thinking that can be some rethinking. I like to think that each of us as passengers that ride the bus could have direct input into it. I don't know if that happened or not. Maybe I was asleep and didn't know when, when the uh, passengers could talk. But I think as far as an assessment is concerned, I like to see an assessment being made where each person or each person who rides the bus has at least the opportunity to do that. I appreciate being in f before you because you didn't have to do this. So I'm asking you to, to, to kind of take a look to reconsider because again, when we look at some of the issues that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, disability, homelessness, and that's another issue. And from what I understand in, in the United States of America, every given night there are 600,000 people on the street. I don't know how many are here in Knoxville, but it's a problem. But if one variable is being looked at, is being, and being considered in this assessment with the new plans coming out, I'd like to see that that might be reviewed. So that's my hope. And that's my understanding that if we can be of any service, I'd love to be of service to you because you've been a great service to us. So as I, as I finish, uh, I just want you to keep those little caveats in mind so that each one of, as we live our lives, and depend on the bus pretty much, uh, night is gonna be wiped out. Uh, we're hoping that, again, that there can be some reconsideration somewhere along the line. What can we do differently? Because again, you've got people coming in from all areas of the world, especially from California and New York, and they're settling here. They're making their homes here, raising their children. That's a good thing. So we need more laborers to be involved in the economic process of the city. So on the one hand, why increase the number of hours that the bus is going to run if you don't have people out there to drive the bus? <laughs> and I think that's part of what's happened. And I hate to think that, you know, that you, I know that you're giving a lot of consideration to passengers. So I just want you to consider that as we move along. So thank you again for the opportunity for allowing me to come to the podium and speak. God bless you and keep looking up. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Henley. The next person is Leslie Smith. 
And then after that, Margaret Meadowcroft. I'm also from Golden Age, and I was, I'm was i very concerned about the, the, what I understand you all are doing, possibly doing is taking both the, 20, uh, the 34 and the 32 out of there, because it was, I unfortunately had a very bad experience, and I had to walk one night when I was late getting a bus, and I walked from a, a store that's clear down the road, and it was over three hours in the dark. Fortunately, I had somebody with me, but I was put off there because they had changed the time and I did not know that. So I would not want to see anybody have to go through that. But if we hear that you're thinking about a floating bus or something, and some of us don't have cars, I don't, and I use the bus quite a bit, and also the lift, and getting you know, into town or anywhere is difficulty. And you can't always ask people to take you places, so that's why you depend on the bus. And uh, I would really like to see some some changes made out there that would make everybody, you know, it, it, it more feasible for everybody. And thank you. And could you state your address and last name for the record? I'm sorry, Leslie Smith. Okay. Thank you. Address. She said golden age. We'll, we got you. <laughs> and then Margaret Meadowcroft. And following that, it'll be Stephen Massingill. Good afternoon. My name is Margaret Meadowcroft. I live at 1508 McCroskey Avenue. I am a resident of Broadway Towers, and I was asked to come and speak on behalf of the residents today. Um, a lot of the residents have been calling me and texting me since the new reimagined um, maps have come out, and they seem a little bit confused. So I was hoping um, to get some clarification before these new routes are implemented in August. Um, the clarification is on the map, it shows that um, inbound and outbound, it will be going from behind Broadway Towers instead of through the main parking lot of Broadway Towers. Um, the biggest concern for people there is at Broadway Towers, we have three gates. One is operated by a keypad, a pin pad. That's our main gate on McCroskey. Our Cecil gate and the new gate on 6th, 6th Street are opened and closed by management, um, maintenance workers or our after hours um, managers. Um, our biggest concern is the 6th Street gate. That is... Sometimes they open it, sometimes they don't. There's a parking lot back there and that's where our smoking area is. But because it's not used a lot, maintenance sometimes forgets about it and won't open that gate. Um, if that were to be, if the bus were to be coming behind on 6th Street, it shows the stops outbound would be on McCroskey and 6th and inbound would be on Cecil at 6th. Um, they can't come out the back gate because if, if none of you have been to Broadway Towers, when you come out that back gate on 6th Street, there are two steep hills, one going down to McCroskey and one going down to Cecil. So they wouldn't be able to come out those gates. They'd actually have to come out the McCroskey or the Cecil gate. And based on the timetable of when the bus is going to come from 7.50 in the morning until I believe the last bus is 5.50 or 6.50, the Cecil gate closes at 4.30. So they were, I guess what the point I'm trying to make is we're going to be very limited. And as you know, the majority of the people that live at Broadway Towers are senior citizens. They use rollators. Um, going up and down that hill on Cecil or even that small hill on McCroskey um, will be difficult, particularly most of them just go to Walmart and that's how they do their grocery shopping. And um, I guess... What I'm asking for is just at some point, some kind of clarification for us. At the last meeting before um, the reimagine took effect, we were assured that they would be going through the parking lot of Broadway Towers. And according to the map, that's changed. So at some point, 
before August, if at some point we could just at Broadway Towers get some kind of clarification as to where we where we're going to need to pick up our buses, our, the the 23 bus, but. I would also like to say on behalf of the residents of Broadway Towers, I'd like to offer our gratitude because in when this first started, Broadway Towers, the 23 wasn't even gonna run anymore. So we do appreciate that you, you heard our comments and you took us into consideration. But again, we're, we're just asking before this is implemented if we could somehow get some kind of clarification. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Meadowcroft. At this time, Stephen Massengill, and following that will be Janet Brown. Good afternoon. My name is <clears throat> My name is Steve Massingill. I live on Scenic Wood Road, which is part of the Norwood community. I am sure that after three weeks of phone calls, emails, social media posts, and even a news last night on WAT, you are very familiar with who I am and why I'm here. On the surface, this may seem like it's about a guy who is losing his way to work after 20 one years because of a first route that is being eliminated, Route 90. There's a little more to the story than that. But I just continue, but I just Continue <laughs> Route 90. You, I'm sorry, but oh gosh, only got five minutes. <laughs> but this continuing Route 90, not only am I losing my only feasible way to work, I'm also losing. I'm also doing something far more, more greater. I am losing my, my independence as a, as a person. Oh boy. As a person with a disability, I can assure you that my independence is very extremely important to me. In fact, other than my relationship, my relationship with, with Christ, my independence is the most important thing in my life. I am fully aware of the other alternate trans ways of transportation. But with my work schedule, I'm sorry, I am fully aware of the other alternate ways of transportation. Um, for example, 
paratransit, but with my work schedule, paratransit is not an option. If you saw the new story last night, you know that I am a substitute teacher at Northwest Middle on Pleasant Ridge. I have been doing that for over 21 years. The I've as a substitute teacher, my work schedule varies day to day. Some days I work eight to four, some days I work for uh, 12 to four, some days I work Eight to twelve, and as a substitute, this is all at a moment notice. So you can see where a fifth round such as ninety is essential for the type of work I do. Mr. Massinger, we're going to extend your time, so please continue. Oh. <laughs> See, now that made me cry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Therefore, at this point, I honestly think my only feasible way of getting to work after August will be for me, for me to write my schedule to work. <coughs> I live approximately, I'm sorry, I live approximately two miles away from this school which takes about 45 minutes to travel on the studio. Therefore, I would need, I would need to buy extra batteries to switch out when I get to work. And like you, I have to work rain or shine. So when it's pouring down the rain, I will be soaking wet by the time I get to work. And then there are the winter months where I will be traveling on my schedule and sub freezing temperatures. And the worst thing about this is the mist, I'm sorry, the mid, the mid March to mid October, I will be traveling on my studio in total darkness. I did not begin to tell you the fate, the number of safety issues that are involved in that. I did not, I may not see the sidewalk and run into, into the road or somebody could very easily attack me and the angel, angel me. But yet this, I feel without the 90, that this is my only 
feasible way to get to work. And I am scared to death. In, in clothing, I realized I, I realized that not so was it's not the same as it was when I moved here 30 years ago. And that change is always needed. I also ap appreciate the goodness I was that gone into the planning of the reimagined program. And yeah, I do believe that many people will benefit from the changes. But does it have to be, be as the sacrifice of my independence? Does it have to be at the sacrifice of potentially my job? And does it have to be at the sacrifice of my livelihood? Is it really worth the cost of that? Please. Don't do this to me. And don't do this to the Norwood community and all of the other communities affected by 90. 90. I want to, I beg of you, I plead with you to at least Take a second look at this. I know you have already approved it, but yet you are KTA. You are the Nazi Transit Authority. You have the power to take a second look and make changes before it goes and do in effect in office. Not having Rock 90 will be will make my life so much more difficult than it already is. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And thank you for try, trying have a good day. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Massengill. The next person will be Janet Bacon, and then following that, Dan Feller. Um, I really would just like clarification about uh, the 11, and I don't know if I'm going to get it today, but I would just like to know if it's going to go by Knox Plaza and if it's um, going to go both ways by Knox Plaza and if each one of the 11s will go that way because I've had some conflicting uh, statements about alternating or something and with uh, 17. I, I just don't understand it. But I don't know if it's going to go by next play, so that's really the only thing I'd like to know, and I hope that it does. Otherwise, how do we get to next play? So I, you know, we'd have to t transfer buses, I guess, from the 11, so I don't know. That's the only thing I'd, I think that's all I'd like to say. Since somebody did make a different type of comment, I will, because apparently it's allowed. I think the bus drivers, a lot of them don't seem to pay any attention anymore to the noise on the bus. Uh, to a lot of shouting. They just ignore it. 
and I think that you should follow. They should follow the rules that it's supposed to be not screaming in the bus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bacon. The next person is Dan Feller. Uh, hi, I made some written comments and I will not take up any more of your time. Thank you, Mr. Feller. Then it'll be Ron Benson and Arlene Gauss. Hi, my name is Arlene Janus, and I live at 3934 Alma Avenue, and I'm here to uh, get an update on the bus going to O'Connor Center. I know at one time uh, y'all took, y'all was going to take us off the route completely, but I'm glad that you put us back, uh, put us back on the route. But I still like to have the bus stop coming like it is because um, there's a lot of people with a low... Um, mobility, and with me, since I am uh, have uh, breathing issues, especially in summertime, I can't walk a mile, I mean a block, to, from the nearest bus stop to the O'Connor Center, and I would like to see the, uh, the original route stay like it is on all senior complexes, and I understand that y'all goal is to not um, come on the parking lots and uh, but we seniors, we need the still the convenience of walking a few steps to catch the bus to get around. Because right now I'm legally blind and I can't drive, and so I depend on the buses. So I'm here to say that I hope y'all will put the bus system back like it was. And if you're gonna change anything, add more services to it. And I understand y'all trying to uh, accommodate further east and further west. So I, I feel like that uh, there's need to be more money. The budget was an issue out here in the past, but the state or the federal level should be giving y'all money to do that. And uh, but see, right now the way y'all are doing it, y'all are giving the seniors a hard time trying to get around. Um, I'm born and raised here, still living, and now that I'm still a senior, now I feel like I'm getting pushed to the curb on trying to get around because of my disability. And also, I want to know how it's affecting the, the existing bus stops going through parking lots, because I do travel some of the locations that the buses are now going on parking lots for pickup. So I want to know where are y'all going to move those uh, bus stops so I'll be aware of what I need to do for the future. Thank you. Thank you. The next person on the list is Pamela Fountain. Oh, sorry. My name is Ron Benson. I live at 917 at Lytic Avenue. Um, I'm here for myself, but as well for my daughter who rides uh, a bus from Fountain City currently uh, in order to get to an eight o'clock job at the UT hospital complex. She leaves the super stop at 6.35 in the morning is what she has to do to connect with a 17, 715 bus downtown that gets her there early enough so she's not gonna be late for this job that she's had for 10 years. And uh, as it stands right now, if she leaves the same time, uh, which won't be from the Superstop because we're doing away with the Superstop, she won't be able to get downtown to get on the 715 bus for an eight o'clock job. So she's gonna to have to leave if, if everything's gonna stay the way it is right now. And what I'm hearing is there's room for change after you've listened to what people are saying. Um, 
she's not had any complaints about leaving at 6.35 to get to an eight o'clock job, and that's important for you to know. Uh, but at this point, if it's gonna take her an hour and 45 minutes to two hours to get to a job that is, I'm, I'm gonna guess maybe 10 miles <laughs> from her house, she could get in the car and go to Chattanooga in the same amount of time. I think there's something that needs to be considered when this whole reimagine idea from what I've been hearing from different drivers, uh, there's a certain amount of, we want, we want to have you on the bus less to get to where you need to go. And I don't, I can't speak to what else is going on on that route at other times during the day. But at this point, she can't take a 635 departure from Fountain City and get to a job at eight o'clock in the morning. So I, I would hope maybe that's something that is, uh, can be looked at and considered with, with some sincerity. Uh, for myself, I uh, moved into the house I'm living in. This summer it'll be 30 years. And when I did that, uh, I chose my, my house based upon a couple of criteria. One of them was uh, I knew that I was not going to be able to drive after the right year. Is that something right here that's doing that or what? Um, I, needed a, I needed to be able to walk to a grocery store. I wanted to be near a hospital, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be able to have public transportation. And uh, they knocked the hospital down, <laughs> but uh, I never thought I'd have to be concerned about transportation. There's been an elect a bus going up Atlantic Avenue, as far as I know, since the day I moved in there. Um, now, the best we can ascertain with the new routing, because the 21 is going to merge with the 24 somehow, some way, it's going to be a much bigger route. And uh, I understand that routes specifically have not been lined out yet. But uh, we see where there's two time points. One, I, I imagine I'm going to have to pick up a bus that I have no idea right now if my bus stop is in jeopardy, if a bus is even going to be going up Atlantic Avenue anymore. Uh, because if you know where Chickamauga and Pershing is as a time point, and then the next time point is way up where the hospital used to be, and now is the safety building at Oak Hill and Huron. And how that bus is going to get between those two time points, if it's a more direct way, then I can't imagine how far I'm going to have to walk to pick up a bus that I'm now used to catching. And... Uh, I've got some really good legs. I, I can go far. That don't bother me. But when I have to just go make a Kroger run, uh, last year we had Atlantic Avenue closed down for about nine months because of sidewalks that were being put in, which required uh, sewage upheaval and all kinds of mess. And I just had to walk two short blocks to Chickamauga, where there's a Baptist church, to catch my bus. Again, the walk is no problem, but boy, when I was coming home with groceries, it was a nightmare. So I don't know if there's going to be any availability to knowledge of what, where the route is going to be, where bus stops are going to be. I was really hoping to find that out before I came to this meeting, thinking that would help us out here in this conversation. So I'm very desirous to know what's going on there. Uh, one last thing is I will say uh, in a third matter. There's a very inconsistent deal going on with the GPS announcements that go on the buses. And I realize for as long as I've been taking public transportation, there's, if there are announcements at all, and I'm used to that more like on trains, it's a, it's a courtesy to let you know where you're at. <laughs> if you've got your eyes closed and you're wanting to doze off, or you're, conversa you know, you're having a conversation with somebody else, it's nice to hear that. But I would also suggest that it's become a real important I don't know how many people are out there like me that really lean on the ability to know where you're at from some kind of an audio thing, uh, that it's out there on some of our buses. And then a lot of times it's not. I don't understand that. I would appreciate that being something that was considered. So I thank you for my time and uh, wish you a good night. Thank you, Mr. Benson. That's all of this. Those are all the people that had signed up for the Cat Reimagine public comments.
So do we vote now? Or we, or do we have another comment? Um, they may have signed the other sheet for the public comments for later. Do you want to do all of them there? Okay. Did you sign the other sheet for later? Okay. You may come up if you need to speak about Cat Reimagined. Make sure that you state your name and your address for the records. My name is Debbie Patterson. I live on Highland Avenue in Fort Sanders. Um, I, I don't need this bus stop, but I've observed a lot of people do. Um, northbound 17th at Ayler, that, that uh, bus stop at Ayler was removed, and a lot of people need it. Uh, there's recovery, job services, and a blood bank. And um, so I just wanted to mention that. And also, um, one more comment is that there has been a problem, uh, CAT has had a problem keeping drivers. And I have been thinking for quite a while about some things, a, a, a way that uh, you could get drivers to stay is to offer scholarships to their kids. And um, one of the drivers, a black woman, her daughter wants to go to law school. I would love to see that happen. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Patterson. I wonder if they, they may have signed the wrong one. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm Kim Fowler. I'm the service coordinator at Golden Age Retirement Village at 1109 Beeman Lake Road. And I just uh, heard from some of my residents today that the bus at some point is gonna stop coming into the complex to pick up the residents and that they would have to walk to the street to catch the bus. Um, over, I'd say over 50% of my residents are mobility impaired, some in scooters, some in wheelchairs, and some on rollators. And uh, that would be very inconvenient for a lot of them they wouldn't even be able to make the trip up to the street. They're just not, they're not mobile enough to do it. And so I'm just asking, uh, when you make your final decisions that you would consider the seniors at Golden Age Retirement Village, I think that's uh, bus 32 and 34, and uh, consider that uh, over 50% are mobility impaired and it would be a big hardship on them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. I think there was someone here and here. Hello, my name is Greg Shore. I'm at the Isabel Towers behind the Civic Auditorium. Um, first of all, let me tell you, I've been, uh, I'm a new resident here. And uh, before that, I was homeless for eight years. And I must say that the CAT system here is just as bad as everywhere else in this country. Um, the number 32 was supposed to, uh, first of all, the number 32 recently, I like the expanded hours. I now don't have to cut short concerts at UT so I don't have to walk home and climb a hill at 9, 10 o'clock at night. I appreciate that. Second of all, the weekend hours, I believe we were promised Sunday service and more frequency on Saturdays from one hour to 30 minutes. We have not got that. I think frequency on Saturday is at one hour, and there is still, still two years, no service for 32 Isabella Towers and beyond on Sunday. Now, I'd, I am not in a wheelchair. I am not in a walker. I'm more than happy to walk through the park and catch the trolley. 
but the trolley doesn't run on Sunday, and there better not be a game on Saturday. Service for Dandridge 32 is appalling. I don't mind going halfway, but all the way, you do a disservice. Bus radios, what is the point of bus radios? Someone mentioned uh, talking on buses and stuff like that. Why do we need to hear the chatter among the bus drivers and the bus service? What is the point of that? That I find obnoxious. More room is needed for shopping carts laundry carts. Many people here are in wheelchairs. Others have walkers. There is room on one route, on one bus, for two handicapped. That is it. Now, if handicapped get on that bus, and I just want to go shopping with a cart, instead of paying, you know, Instacart to have it delivered to me. I can't because there's no room for my cart because of wheelchairs and walkers and such. It makes shopping impossible and at the best difficult. I hope improvements will be made, and I hope the, the attitude and the thinking at CAT evolves beyond this need or this thinking that seems to permeate the South in this country, that everybody should own a car. And if they don't have a car, somehow they're childish or ignorant or stupid or disabled or incompetent. Someone mentions homelessness. Homelessness Mr. is Shore, the you have least 30 of your seconds. problems here. It's, a, it's transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shore. There was another hand over here at one point. Yes. In the black. Okay. Okay. State your name and address for the records, please. My name is Allison Haney. I live on 204 North Laurel Circle in the Inskip Norwood community. I'm here today to speak of the concern of the removal of Route 90 behind the behalf. I heard about this from my own mom. I'm getting ready to be a teacher's assistant at Fort Sanders Educational Development Center in downtown Knoxville in 21st Street. I have inspired to volunteer at the school at the call of the principal Jessica Ruiz in January 2024, after I kept on saying good things about that school, I was a student there, for the record. I was also, I'm also thinking about also doing East Tennessee Children's Hospital as a child life specialist in the evening. We want this route to be saved. And I also go to church on Merchants Drive at Wallace Memorial Baptist Church on Sunday mornings. Some people have been learning how to communicate and some people have to walk. But I had a person who was around my age who was a friend of my friend 
who went to the future program with him, who did piano, Ben Crederick, he passed after he lost his route when he was hit by a drunk driver last August. I hope the result comes in soon. All those angels, as thee. I wish that there was another way for the Route 90 to be saved for every people in the community to sit on the bus to go to work. As an insane response, say it loud, say it proud. My grandmother used to take the bus to St. Mary's Medical Center on Oak Hill Avenue. And she was a unit secretary when she retired. Her and I would spend evenings or weekends with her. And sometimes even summer break when me and my sisters were out of school. Say it loud, say it proud. Save Route 90. Thank you, Allison. You're welcome. This one. Gentlemen in the back. Hi. My name is Joseph Meadowcroft. My wife spoke earlier. I live at 1508 McCroskey, otherwise known as Broadway Tower. Uh, I've got three things. First one's very quick. Uh, Ms. Kirk, you showed incredible compassion and respect to Mr. Massengill, and that needs to be acknowledged, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate his courage for sharing his comments with us. Thank Absolutely. You. Second thing, when they look at maps, they say, oh, it's only a, a block and a half from Broadway Tower to Broadway. Or what's the difference between the front of Broadway Tower and the back of Broadway Tower? In Iowa, in Oklahoma, that's a good question. There's no difference. We live in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. If you are on McCroskey, at the, at the gate to Broadway Towers, you are standing in what would be the basement of Broadway Tower. You drive up into the parking lot and you get to the first floor. If you're on Cecil, you're equivalent with the fourth floor. So if someone has to get off at Cecil and McCroskey, they have to walk down a hill that's two stories and a half a block. Now, to put that in, in real terms, imagine ground level here and ground level above that sign. You look around, you see wheelchairs, you see rollators. Now, I've had two knee replacements in the last few years. A few years ago, I couldn't walk that hill. When you're standing in Broadway Towers on the, on the ground floor, you are the equivalent of four stories up in the Kroger that's two tenths of a mile down a hill. When you look at a flat map, you don't see that. It doesn't exist. If you look at a topographical map, you see it. So they have to consider elevation. And then the last thing I want to point out is some, we've had my, my wife and myself from Broadway Towers. We had someone from Isabella Towers. We had someone from Golden Age. We had someone from Summit Towers. Do you notice a trend here? All the people that are affected by this are the elderly, the disabled, the poor. I have my social security check. I can guarantee everybody on that board brings home double what I bring home on my social security check after I worked for 40 years, 60 hours a week. Before you guys think about some of these route changes, you need to get a walker, go to the Kroger parking lot, and walk up the hill, or maybe take your parents to do that, or your grandparents, because uh, Mr. Winford, you're obviously in good physical shape. You can make that easily. You know, 
Most of you can. But when you're dealing with strokes, which I've had, knee replacements, which I've had, when you're dealing with a wheelchair or a rollator or a walker, that two-tenths of a mile to Kroger is a lot more than two-tenths of a mile. And the two-tenths of a mile back up the hill with your groceries, with your two gallons of milk, that's almost impossible. You know, and 10 years ago, I was just as arrogant and unthinking when I would just jump in my car and drive wherever I wanted to go. You know, but when you hit a certain point in life, bad knees, strokes, dementia, these things take away your humanity. And then you have to deal with the kindness of the wealthy who happen to get elected into office. You, know, you need to remember Isabella Tower, Broadway Tower, Summit Towers, um, <coughs> Golden Age. Any one of you could be in those facilities and depending on those services in just a few short years. I'm only 59 almost. You know, I'm too young to be there, but I'm there. You know, and it could happen to any of you. Thank you. Once again, thank you again for the respect and the compassion that you personally showed Mr. Massengill. Thank that you. is commendable. Thank you. Please come forward and state your name and address for the records. Sure, I was going to say anything until that. Um, my last name is Traver, T R A V E R, and my address is 1171 Armstrong Avenue. So, Guy Beloved Towers, Billy Nay. So, um, I, I think for the most part, from what I've heard, we're, we're really, really fortunate. We have the 21 pretty much right in front of our building. And then if we can walk one and a half blocks, we got the 22. So for the most part, I think Guy Beloved Towers is pretty much fortunate. Um, so I'm grateful for that. But as a commentary, <laughs> one thing I'd really like to see is that I, I usually take the 20, 21 and 22. When I take the 20, which I also take to the church I go to also, but but when I take the 20 to go to the um, Walmart and when I would used to get off there at that, um, on the other side from Walmart, that, that stop that's like right down at the bottom of the hill, if it used to be closer to the Chick-fil-A, I believe, but now it's like stuck up where it's, and I understand for the bus drivers, it's supposed to make it easier for them to get over, but that stop is really dangerous. I mean, if you have a walker or a rollator, it's, and I usually do have a walker or a rollator, um, <clears throat> but if you get out there, there's just not very much room. It's really, I think, a really dangerous stop. And I think it should be moved back down closer to Chick-fil-A where it was, or, or really it'd be better taken out altogether. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Is that, oh, come on up, sir. Right here, and then you, okay. I'm the Reverend Dr. Daryl Ray. I live now at Northgate Tower uh, uh, at 4301 uh, Little Springs Road. I've only been in Knoxville for around a year now. And uh, I was here back going to school in the 70s. So, uh, you know, I've seen seen the city change quite a bit. 
and uh, I, I really like Knoxville. I think CAD has done a very effective job with the resources that they have. And I think the challenge that you all had in this reimagined was almost impossible to stay revenue neutral and expand the service areas. So while there's places that I'm upset about that it's not there, we have to get used to the changes and adjust. Nobody likes, us old folks, we don't like changes, you know. We, we want things to stay the same. But, but like, like I read uh, one of the articles, you got to do what's best for most of the people. And I appreciate that attitude. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like to sort of, uh, what we've heard here from people, most of uh, the concerns are the senior areas. And I used to li live uh, down on Middlebrook and Western area. And I had daily treatments at UT Medical Center. And it would take me, if I rode the bus, over two hours to get to UT. Uh, whereas I could roll in my chair the 4.2 miles uh, in six, 70 minutes. So what was I doing? I was rolling uh, all the way to the UT that way instead of using the bus because of the time difference of so what you've done to bring the buses more frequent would solve that problem, and I, pre I appreciate that. I do want to make, I like to almost make a poll, a poll here. If they decided that the 15 minute time frame is what's restricting the seniors from getting their attention, would you be willing to encourage them to go to a 20 minute timetable so that the buses can go the extra two blocks to the senior center, centers to pick up the people that want to ride? And I know that some two months, there's not a whole lot of people, especially during the winter months, we stay in. <laughs> but we need to encourage our elderly to get out, especially in the warm weather. And, it benefits them in many ways. So we need to encourage that as much as possible. So uh, how many of you would say, I would, I would agree to a 20 minute timetable uh, if I had the bus coming to my place? Anybody? Yes. Yes, because they got people. Yeah, okay. So yeah. I applaud you for the for the extra uh, cutting the time down, but I think that maybe you went a little too far. I want to make one other comment. Now that I'm at Northgate, I ride the 22 bus down to to the Central Station, and then I have to get on the 42 to go on out to UT. Well, like today, I arrived on the 22, and the 42 was still sitting there. But by the time I offloaded, the 42 was gone. You have 30 seconds, sir. So it was very, you know, sometimes I think we restrict, and I think there's a lot of pressure on your drivers. I think there needs to be a little, that five minutes could make a big difference in their schedule and the stress levels and uh, and then y yesterday, I was in Fountain City wanting to come back. Your time has been exhausted. Pardon me? Your time at five minute limit is over at this time. You're, you're gonna cut me off? I just had that final comment. Thank you, Yes, go ahead quickly. Thank you very much. Uh, I was crossing Broadway to uh, the bus stop and the bus pulled up. And 
it acted like it was going to wait while I finished crossing the street to get on the bus. And just as I got up to the bus, it pulled off. Now, I'm sure the driver's thinking, I'm, I'm already running late. Uh, I, I got to meet the 42 bus <laughs> at the station. I, can, I can't spend the time here. And that's where I think we, we need to give a little more flexibility to our drivers. And, and we need to watch how the routes interconnect a little bit better. But I think you've done a fantastic job. You're to be applauded for what you've accomplished. And I thank you. Thank you. Yes, the gentleman in the hat. Hi, my name is David Vineski, and I live over at 508 Union Avenue in the Pembroke. I have two cars. They sit in the garage because you give us such good bus service. And I take 45. I work part-time. I'm 75 years old. I just work part-time. I love the bus service here. I've lived in six states, and I will tell you, Ohio, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York, your service is much better. Your drivers, I've been here since, uh, I've been riding your bus since 2011, and only have compliments for not only the drivers, but the buses are clean and virtually on time. I've driven over three million miles in my life, uh, and I've done, been very successful, very happy. I own two homes. I don't need to ride the bus, but I love to ride the bus. I don't want to drive. Your drivers are friendly, and they respond to the needs of the people that I've ridden with. But here's my comment. For the ancillary routes that you're having a hard time maintaining because of the labor shortage, I can understand that might be better to, to take those individuals and have a call a bus type service that can assist them so that you don't have to take, in my case, I drive, uh, I ride 45, 20 is excellent, 22 is excellent, 45 has been excellent, but I realize you're gonna cut that route. And I do work, I live downtown, uh, the, the issues that have come to my thoughts, being that I would much prefer to be on a cat bus than in my car, by far. It's not a, it's not a cost factor for me. I'm still pretty healthy. I can, I can walk from here to Texas if I had to. But your service has been so good. Uh, the concerns I have is that the major buses would leave the bus terminal and they would come up Church Avenue and then on to Henley Street and then to continue on their route. And I like that feature because I could board the bus on Church Street, which was really good for me because I go to work at 7 in the morning, so I take the 6.15 bus. Now I have to walk down to the bus terminal to get 45 or to get 41 because they no longer come down by the library and then make the turn on to Henley. And your presence in the, in the downtown district was appreciated by, it. I have several people living in the Pembroke that take the bus only because it's so convenient and they're older people, they're retired. Uh, some have some handicaps, but they're minor, but they can walk the two blocks to get there. I also uh, volunteer up at UT. I take the 42 bus all the time, it's fantastic. There's no place to park up there. So I guess, I guess you're, you're, there are two concerns, one of which is a reduction in bus stops. Uh, currently, <clears throat> the 41 and the 45 now go over the Gay Street Bridge. <clears throat> the only point of boarding there is over on Main Street. So you really have to go to the bus station to get the bus now. So your presence, you don't have that presence anymore. And if you look around at the downtown area with the number of apartments in construction, currently even on the south, if you look at the south waterfront, Knoxville is growing and it's, and it's, a, it's a great town to live in. And I've lived in, I've lived in several cities. I would rate this one number one. That's why I didn't move to Florida. One of the reasons why I moved to Knoxville was not only you people are so nice and friendly and outgoing, 
but you had the best service in six states. So you want to keep that service up there and you want to encourage more people like me and my friends to take the bus. And I do that. And I would honestly tell you, in the six states I've lived in, I stopped taking the buses in the other five states. This is the only one I want to stay on because you've got a very good bus service. Your staff is excellent. Your phone response is excellent. Have more seconds. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like take those areas that are affecting these people, concentrate on them. And if it means you need a call a bus, get a call a bus for them. Cut the route. Cut the route because you certainly don't have the staff and the maintenance. The other thing I'll tell you over the past 13 years and uh, I've noticed is that on the buses I've gone on 41, on 20, 22, 45, and I t <coughs> those Your time buses, is up, sir. I'm those sorry. buses are never Finish more up. than half full. So you could use a smaller bus. Okay? But we do appreciate your service. It's excellent. Excellent. And thank you for your insight. Thank you. Do we get any feedback on the meeting? Is there feedback coming back to me after this? There will be discussion after. Okay. So at this time, we propose to... Um, I'll t entertain proposals to for a motion for a cat reimagined. In discussion. In discussion, yes, amongst the board. I have a question. Yes. Um, more of a procedural question. Um, so I know that staff has told us in the past that um, essentially we will be voting on the system, but we'll also be voting on the individual routes. Today, is it, my question is, is it possible to vote on specific routes without voting on the system as a whole? So procedurally, the, the public hearing is, is, has been conducted and approved. So at this point, we are considering the route as further adjusted by staff after hearing comment at the public hearing. So the motion to be heard is for approval of the system. If there, my suggestion to your comment would be um, to discuss whatever concerns you've heard here today and, and, and if, if there's more input needed, uh, receive that today or not, or you know, and then if, if the motion is made to approve the system as proposed and uh, revised, if there's not enough satisfaction on any member's part to not approve it today, then your vote would be no, subject sure. to further discussion and revision. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, because so yeah, I'll just say so much. So first of all, every, thanks everybody for, for speaking up. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, I have been at a point in my life where I was carless for two years in this city. Um, grew up in a super poor family. Parents passed away when I was younger. I was on my own. Um, I had to rely on the bus. So I fully understand what it's like to only have the bus to get around. Um, and I'm obviously a I'm, I'm an American, so I believe in democracy. So I, I love that you all came to speak up and, and bring these issues to us. Um, you know, as, as my fellow commissioners know, I am an, a rabid advocate for transit, and I love what we're doing with Cat Reimagined. I, I think that overall it is going to be beneficial to the city, um, especially because, again, frequency does matter. Um, I think one of the worst feelings in the world, I've said it before here, is missing a bus by 30 seconds and having to wait an hour or having to wait half an hour especially in the rain when there's no bench. <laughs> um, so um, I, I very much love what we've done with this. Um, and I was very prepared to hardcore vote 100% yes on this going into this. Um, but again, I, I, I believe in democracy and I do believe that, you know, these folks that came and spoke, which was part of our process, um, it, 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 your, your input obviously matters. Um, I, I am curious. I am, I am not comfortable. I'm at a point right now. I am not comfortable voting for this package, knowing the insane amount of life changing pressure it will put on folks losing the cross town, losing the 90. Um, what I'm curious about, because again, I, I, I want to vote for this hardcore. I really do. Is there 
could we potentially look at try try to find a way to reinstate the crosstown similar to what we did with Sequoia Hills, where it is there at peak hours on weekdays, so it's not perfect, but it is there since we don't we are not friends with Dolly Parton and we do not have her millions of dollars to increase the bus funding. I wish we were. Um, but that is my concern at this point. Again, y'all know me. I really, really love this. I want to vote for it, but I'm curious if that is something that would be possible and what types of reduction in service would come. Um, because again, I, I believe frequency is of utmost importance, but also, you know, I believe that as a society, you know, we, and several people said this, like we've built our society around the car and it's unfair. And so we've got to be able to provide good transit, especially to folks who need it the most. Um, and I understand that we're trying to build a system that works for the majority of Knoxville, but I want us, I, I want to know that we've done everything we can when we have folks coming to us like this saying, Hey, this is going to just obliterate every chance, I, especially because we all know Knoxville has a really crappy sidewalk network, <laughs> you know, um, and none, and our bus stops barely have any protection. So that's where I'm at. Just cards on the table. I love I love the plan. I love the work staff has done. You all know I, I'm always about this plan. But now that they brought this up, that's that's my concern is if there's a way to bring back a, a small portion of the cross town in the way we did with Sequoia. So I will let uh, Belinda and Umar talk about how that Route 90, I don't think it's possible, but I'll let Belinda and, and, and Umar talk about that. You know, we looked at, you know, covering a section of Merchant and Pleasant Lane, it, just like a shuttle similar to Route 10. And the cost on that, you know, is over $100,000. And you're also going to have a lot of that cost eaten up with, uh, the travel time there and back, the deadheading. Uh, so, and, and then also, you know, if we're looking at that, it again goes back to what are we cutting? And we're, we may be right back in the same situation of somebody's service is going to get cut because we want to institute, you know, some kind of shuttle service. But I don't think Route 90 can just come back inside this system. And I'll let you, Mar and Plenty, talk about that, but I don't think that's possible. And keep in mind how we define the 90. A huge majority of the 90 is retained. Valley View, all of Middlebrook, all of that is the current 90. So there's a small portion of, well, there's a portion of the 90. It is not small to the people who live on it. Be, eat west of Clinton Highway to Pleasant Ridge and Pleasant Ridge down. That's the section. So we have service on part of merchants um, between Clinton Highway and Central Avenue Pike. And um, it just is that it goes on Clinton Highway from there. So um, Isaac is correct. We looked at some other kind of peak type options. The problem is it's going so much further um, to try to cover that area. So um, there's more miles a day, um, it's more time, and it's more, as Isaac mentioned, deadhead. We've got to get those drivers way out there, too. So it was just a different cost structure than the, the 10, which is the what we were able to add in that peak service. Um, so, so that's certainly a challenge. So something else would have to go away. Really quick, though, I do want to clarify a few comments just so everyone understands we, we are serving the front door of Golden Age. Um, that was, I wanted to be sure that was not clear. So the way that works, we, the plan has been to serve the front door of Golden Age. We then go on up to Kirkwood and turn around and come back. And so we're, what we were trying to do is from downtown, direct service to the front door of Golden Age, but then we go up to Kirkwood and then come back. So coming back, we were trying not to go in a second time because it's like 10 minutes later. So it's just, so that was maybe the misunderstanding there. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, Broadway Towers, we had designed the stops to be directly across from the pavilion that Broadway Towers built on 6th Avenue. So right there. 
um, that, that probably maybe wasn't clear also. So I wanted to clarify that as well. Um, Isabella, Isabella Towers still has service. It's every 30 minutes on the weekdays um, and then has Saturday and Sunday service. So that is another clarification I wanted to make. Another no one. Sunday service, I'm sorry. It, this is all part of August. It's all planned for, this is all a proposal for August, right? So we've been working on this since 2021. And this is us finally getting to this point just to sort of review that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to the board is that um, I, Isaac had mentioned earlier that we had received comments prior to this meeting, and you have seen those in your packet. Um, a couple of those issues we are recommending a solution for, and you have that in front of you. One of those is was mentioned um, earlier by Mr. Benson, his daughter, I don't know if he's still here, um, but we were able to adjust the first two morning trips on the Broadway to allow that connection that he was referencing to still happen. That is in this packet that you see here. The other side is the Flanagan Landing issue that we um, have already solved as an emergency detour, but we want the board to approve it as part of Cat Reimagined officially, and those are those two pieces there. Um, in your packet, you have a resolution in the back, and that resolution references approval of Cat Reimagined with those two changes added, because yeah. those were two that we, we would be able to solve given the, the, the way that the um, resources are, are, are set up there. Welcome. Good welcome. Sir, at this time, the public comment section is over, but there will be time to discuss after the meeting's over. Individual questions. Thank you. So that's, I hope that, that helps sort of clarify a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I also just mentioned to the, the O'Connor Senior Center, yes, we're not going into the parking lot, but we are serving a door um, just out just out, off, off to the right there of the O'Connor Senior Center. Right, the plan is to stop at O'Connor, directly at O'Connor on Winona, right? Mid-block stop at O'Connor. If I may ask staff to clarify, and Mr. Thorne, I think you or Belinda want to address this, but uh, specific to Mr. Durham's question, help the, the the board members understand if we go back and look at a system redesigned to incorporate some aspects of the 90, what are we looking at in terms of this process, where we are, the August target, where are we out from there? It would be delayed. The August target day would be delayed. Um, it could be several months if we're looking at serious restructuring of some of these routes. If you can't meet your August deadline, what is the next closest time point given your shakeup obligations mm -hmm. when that could be? The next one would be in January. Following that would be in May. But we would have to bring the plan back to you mm -hmm. over a period of time for you to review mm -hmm. and more public comment. So it, we're, we're looking a year, probably close to a be. year from today. If that's yeah, possible. Yeah. And also, too, the, the board has approved CAT Reimagined. Today, we are approving the actual designed routes and the timetables. I think the other thing is, um, and, and when Tommy Smith um, was chair during this process, he reminded all of us, as well as our audience, that um, we are not laying down rail tracks here. This is not permanent, right? This is, this is going to be an evolutionary process as transit has, that's why you're here, right? Because this is an evolutionary process. Um, I suspect that um, there, there will be, we'll, we'll come back to you with, with um, additional tweaks as, as we can um, through this process. Um, you, Mar and I have kind of been thinking about that already, so. 
two things. One, I have a note of parliamentary inquiry. And the second is that I, um, I'll start with my second first. I want to uplift what one of our um, public commenters said, and I'm going to probably mess up the name because I was right in everything. Um, I honor and hear that um, some of what appears to be the biggest changes are negatively affecting those who um, have the greatest difficulty with transportation. And I, I cannot vote in good conscience knowing that. So that's where my parliamentary inquiry comes from. My understanding of Robert's Rules of Order um, newly revised edition is that we can create what's called a consent calendar whereby we put the items that we all fully agree on or that we can agree as one standing vote and say we move to approve the items on the consent calendar. Therefore, we move to approve the routes that we have not had to discuss and then we discuss the other routes individually. The second parliamentary inquiry, just for clarification, is that there's not a motion on the floor, right? There is no current motion on the floor. Okay, no. so my understanding is that we shouldn't be having discussion right now until the motion's been made, and then we open up the, the thing. So if it is appropriate for us to do the consent calendar, I would propose that we move to discuss all of the ones except the ones that were raised um, today as one consent calendar route. We vote to approve or not approve that, and then we discuss the others individually. Well, I will tell you that, answer your question in two ways. First, we generally do not use a consent calendar form here, but more practically, this is a unified route system. You take two routes out, three routes out, or don't approve so many routes, you don't have a system. And so the, the whole system has to be approved. Now, to Isaac's point, Belinda's point earlier, Cat Reimagined has already been approved. We are now approving based upon the subsequent adjustments that were made at the last public hearing. So that sy this system has already been approved subject to these revisions and for implementation in August. But you, you can't, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we can't approve so many routes and not approve other routes and have a system approved. It'd be very difficult in terms of the timing and connection of these buses in the system. That would be very, very difficult to do one, you know, one off approval. But it could be done. Well, the routes have already been approved is sort of the challenge that we're facing. So this board approved the plan in July of 2023, which was the, the map showing where the routes went. And that was after many rounds of public input, outreach, and engagement over the course of a couple of years. So um, that's sort of where I see the challenges. This board has approved these routes already. This was just us coming to the public to show the detailed timetables and, and the maps themselves and show um, a little bit more detail of, of the process that we had already gone through. So help us understand what has changed since the approval of the system, of the system that we've had some tweaks to some of the routes and we've got some timetables. Yes. Identified. So um, what was changed, we have a, a sort of a list here, um, were additions essentially. We were able to, with timing, um, add the addition of Target to the Route 23 service we were able to provide 30 minute frequency on the Route 37, Morningside Riverside, which was not in the original plan. That is Isabella Towers and the Riverside area with that 30 minute service. The addition of the Route 10 Sequoia Hills, um, and then a minor change to the routing of the downtown connector to serve Knoxville Station's platform. And that so that, those were the changes since the July approval. In addition, the two from what we heard from the public input from last month. Yeah, those, the two that we're bringing today is basically the small change to Route 45 is Sarah Flanagan Apartments, and then the small timetable change to Route 22 Broadway. Yes, and if I, if I may just say, Seems I want to thank everybody for their comments and certainly 
Thank you for attending today. My name is Umar Tennessee, and I'm, I'm fairly new to this process. I came in at the tail end of CAT reimagining, uh, almost in, instantaneously saw some things that I was concerned about. But there's two themes here today. That's access to stops with seniors and the Route 90. And I understand those are some very important issues. But overall, CAT Reimagine is going to increase service and make our service better for so much more people that are not here in this room. But I guarantee you, going forward as the new manager of planning, I will do everything in my power to make sure that this system improves as we can improve our, increase our budget, for one. But it will, increase, it will improve the service and convenience to our senior citizens in this system. The 90, we may not be able to bring back for August, but I guarantee you we will be working hard and taking comments and going out to the public to figure out a way to accommodate Pleasant Ridge and some of those Cedar Lane segments that are missing in this system and in any other segment that are missing in this system. So just give us a little more time. We put a lot of time, this staff has put a lot of time and we've taken a lot of input and the majority of the people in this system have spoken. And it, ha it is gonna have a negative effect on, some, on, on the people in this room and some of the people in this room because I guarantee you that some of the comments we, go, we, we are gonna resolve. So just bear with us. It's a new day. This system is moving forward. This city is moving forward. And I guarantee you that we will take all of these comments into consideration as we continue to make adjustments in this system. And I, I just want to thank you all for letting me speak. So to answer the question, the parliamentary question, since the system has already been approved and it's come back to you with additional adjustments and some additional detail in terms of stops. Really, we're on an up and down vote today. Um, it, we can vote it down if there's, you know, if the, if the, there's not a majority who feels it needs to be approved. We'll send them back to the drawing board and we'll do whatever. Uh, the time frame will be, you know, for any changes, at least in terms of the cat reimagine changes, they will be delayed well beyond August, but if that's, if that's the sense of it, that's the sense of it. But you are correct, there's no motion on the floor yet. <laughs> so at some point we will be calling on, if, if we're done with comments, we will need to call a motion. I would like to make a motion to move forward with the resolution. I'll second it so we can talk about it. All in favor? Any more, oh, any more comments? Oh, any more comments? Sorry. Um, man, um, what an interesting Thursday. Um, yeah, so this is. I'm really grateful for what you said, Umar, um, because that's something that um, I've also been, you know, passionate about is once we do cat reimagine, there's still a lot, lot further to go. And, and, and we all know that and we all believe that, um, you know, it is obviously very hard to create a, a system that better serves a city of 189,000 people when you're not allowed to get more money for it. Um, and I'm very grateful for what, what staff has done. Um, I, we all we all knew this wouldn't be perfect um, and that there would be some, you know, negative effects. Um, but to my core, I still believe that that this system is, is going to radically help the people of this city. Um, it's, you know, um, I mean, again, just the frequency thing alone, um, the fact that people will be able to use a bus to get to church on Sundays, um, the fact that people will be able to do more on Saturdays. Um, you know, we've got a long way to go to get where we should be. Um, you know, in America, nobody should have to rely on a car and nobody should um, feel like a second class citizen for riding the bus. Um, 
but I, I, I do, you know, since since we can't vote root to root, um, you know, I believe that this system gets us a little bit closer to making transit riders feel like first class citizens. Um, so I'll, I'll be voting yes. Any other commissioner comments? I'd like to agree with what Dustin said. I, while there are still some areas that we can work to continuously improve, I think that overall the changes to the network will benefit so many people. And we have heard that over and over the past few years, going out, doing surveys, um, bringing in uh, public meetings, um, and there are so many people who can benefit from this. I recognize there are some people in the room um, who may be affected negatively, and that is a very, very hard decision that we don't take lightly today. I agree with Commissioner Breakwood. We appreciate everyone that was able to come out tonight, or this afternoon rather, to speak and where your voices have been heard. So at this time, we, oh, I didn't see you. No, just one comment. I'd like to just, and thank you, Omar, for being willing to look at this. And I just think it's important that we really work for people who are dependent on public transit that they can get to government, I won't say amenities, but facilities like they need to go to legal aid or they need to go just the places they need to get to, which is, you know, you can do it if you don't have a car. So if you look at that, then I mean, I overall think it's a good plan. I'm the new kid here. So I just got here as a couple of us did. So we weren't involved in the, the years long process and thank you all for that. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good plan, but I would like to be sure that we can look at the folks who are having real difficulties getting on with their daily lives. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, at this time we're gonna go um, go ahead and vote. So all in favor? I count six in favor. The ayes have it. Oh, any opposed? I'm sorry, Dr. Winifred, opposed. Thank you. I count one opposed. Do we need to do any more puppets? We're done with this part. At this time, do we have any old business? No old business. I think that did everybody. I think there was one more. Okay. We also have Teresa Bradley or Karen Harris that had signed up for public comments. Are either of those individuals still here? Please come forward. And state your name and address, and you'll have five minutes. My name is Karen Harris, and I live in the Vista, and I want to know, I ride bus 30, and I want to know if they're going to cut it out. We'll have a time for you to speak yep. to staff after about specific routes. Yep. We will get with you after this. this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other person signed up was Karen Harris. Okay, then I think we're... Okay, then our meeting is adjourned and our next meeting one, will be on May 23rd. Oh. One, one thing, I just... Sorry, uh, this is this is Belinda's last meeting with Kat, last KTA meeting. And uh, I just want to thank Belinda for her work for the last 26 years at CAT, uh, the work that she's done with KTA board, uh, guiding us through these kind, these conversations, uh, route changes, fare changes. So I just greatly appreciate Belinda and her 26 years of service. Yes, on behalf of the board, we thank you for your years of service and your dedication. And we'll see you at the next meeting on May 23rd. We're adjourned. If you have any further questions for the staff after regarding specific routes, they will remain. <laughs>